Welcome to another episode of It's All About Arts. My name is Amanda Lamro smith I am your host for today, and to my right is Mr. Brian McDonald. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are coming to you live from BNN Studios, and we are also simulcasting live, uh, for those of you that don't live in the city. Uh, you can find us at www.bnntv.org. There is a button underneath there that says Channel 9 Watch Now. You click that and you can pull it up on your computer screen. Um, we are also now simulcasting on the radio, which is pretty cool. You can find us on WBCA, uh, channel 102.9. So that's some pretty cool stuff. Uh, shout out to Glenn Williams. He's not with us today, but he will be back next week. Hi, Glenn. I hope I do you proud. Um, so we have a special treat for you guys today. We have an art reception going out in the uh, art gallery outside. We're going to have someone interviewing some of the artists so you can get a better understanding of their inspirations and take a look at some of their works. Um, that'll take place a little bit later in the show. Um, and we also have two very talented photographers here, um, which we will also be interviewing later in the show, uh, showing you some of their works and kind of getting a first-hand look at um, their story and their background, which is pretty cool stuff. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Main Streets. This is a very important organization for both uh, Glenn, myself, and the entire organization here at BNN TV. They are a volunteer program, um, and they help businesses get acclimated to the community in which they live. So they're not bringing outside people. They're very focused on making sure that they're marketing correctly to their neighborhoods um, and that they're bringing in local business. Uh, this is all volunteer work. Uh, so if you see somebody with a Main Street uh, t-shirt on, thank them for both Glenn, myself, Brian, and everyone here at BNN Studios. Uh, so with that, hi Brian. Hi Amanda. Thank How's you it for going? joining us today. Absolutely. This is great. It's good to have you here. How uh, were your holidays? Holidays were great. Holidays were great. Holidays were great. And did you survive the snowstorm? I did. I did yeah. a lot of nothing. A I just watched nothing. the snow accumulate outside. Yeah, right? <laughs> Sitting pretty eating some soup. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, New Year's. Oh, by the way, this is our first show of the new year, which is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we have a fabulous list of artists, uh, so stay tuned for future shows, and happy 2017 to all of you out there. Um, I hope you are sticking to your New Year's resolutions. I know I am trying to. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you doing on yours, and what's on yours? <sighs> They're going. They're um, going. Well, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself an artist, but I, I play guitar mm -hmm. and consider it as a hobby. And mm -hmm. one of my New Year's resolutions is I, I want to pick up the guitar more this year. Yeah, that's I don't feel like cool. I played enough last year. Yeah. So. Do you think you'll have like designated times that you'll try to fit into your week? Or? Yeah, I want to make designated times, you know, towards the end of the day where I can kind of unwind and, you know, take out the acoustic guitar. Yeah. and. And, and start playing. Yeah, yeah, online from the day? Absolutely. And what type of music are you drawn to? All sorts of stuff. So it, it was funny, when, when I was a kid, I, I started taking my parents' uh, cassette tapes um, playing cassette different, tapes. yeah, Do cassette tapes those? back in the, like in the late 80s, yeah. early 90s, and I've, I've always had a passion for music, and yeah. it's funny, I used to make mixtapes listening to the radio and wait for that song to come on and have to hit the record button, and it took, used to take hours to do that, yeah. so, um, but just from listening to music and, like, classic rock and, mm -hmm. and things of that nature mm -hmm. um, kind of inspired me to, you know, pick up a, a guitar when I was 10 years old. And I've been, been playing ever since. Now, I hear that you uh, were always an entrepreneur and you might have sold a couple mixtapes uh, in school? Possibly, Possibly. yeah. I was, Make I've, a little extra cash? Yeah, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. I, yeah. I never knew what I wanted to do, um, yeah. but I was always doing, doing something. And knew that you lines. wanted to do it yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, tell us a little bit about your backgrounds. I know um, you have a pretty successful uh, company down yeah, in South we're, Shore. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We have a really good group of employees um, that have moved us forward. So the um, name of the company is Unified Networking Solutions. Unified Networking Solutions. And we are in uh, Rainham, Massachusetts, and we just started our eighth year. We have wow. 16 employees. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And yeah. um, what we do is we provide outsourced IT support for small and medium-sized businesses. Cool. And we also work a lot in K-12, both public and private. So okay. it's really awesome that I get to go into school districts and really help the directors of technology with their tech plans, implement, implementing Chromebooks and wireless, and making sure that all the students and teachers have a good experience um, on the network. Yeah, that's really important, especially these days and age when we're you know, technology is now the thing that everyone's using. There is no 
mm. note taking yeah. it seems these Absolutely. days. And so and speaking of technology, it's it's awesome to be on the other side of the show today but yes. I, it's great it's very easy uh, to watch the show uh, at home to Streaming stream live, live. Yeah. stream live on the website you guys yeah. did a great job of making that easy for your viewers yeah. and coming I, from a tech guy that's yep. pretty impressive right? and I, I sit on the couch at home and stream it to In my pajamas, TV yeah. yep and Good. watch the show yep. that's awesome well I'm yeah. glad that you are a consistent viewer that's awesome to hear um, so yeah, do you have any other inspirations besides music? Are you, do you find yourself being drawn to anything creative or? I, w I would say where my creativity really comes from is again from my entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I really like collaborating and learning about different cultures. So that's why I enjoy working in the public sector and in K-12. Right. So I really get to see how the culture is different um, in different schools. Right. And get to really understand um, what they're trying to accomplish for the students. I think it's so important. Yeah, so important, especially because, you know, these kids are getting excited that they're getting new technology and then they get it and it's not working properly and it's like, mm -hmm. what's the point? Well, it's great and a lot of these IT directors rely on us to really help them provide, you know, the right equipment so they have a good experience because, I mean, yeah. wireless is, is so important where students are bringing on, you know, mobile devices and, and right. tablets and the big thing right now is Chromebooks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wh what's the website that they can go to? Oh, to uh, learn more about Unified? Yes. So uh, our website is unifieditsupport.com. Cool. Now, um, going back to the guitar, which seems to be your outlet creatively, mm -hmm. right? Um, you kind of have a cool story about someone who's up and coming. Is that correct? I do have a cool story. All right, let's so, hear it. Um, long story short, I was at my grandparents' house about 11 years ago, and it was family and friends. And there was this young man, about five years old, um, who grabbed my guitar and started playing. Mm -hmm. um, way better than I could play. And he was playing <laughs> yeah, Twist and Shout by the Beatles and singing at wow. five years old. I'm like, wow, this kid's going to be a prodigy. And we'll fast forward to next year. When he was six years old, he was on The Ellen Show, playing Twist Ellen. and Shout on The Ellen Show. And um, now he tours with Buddy Guy, and he's 17. His and what's his name? His name's Quinn Sullivan. And isn't he now on XM? Yeah, actually, yeah, radio? I did. I just, I just saw him on XM Radio. Pretty cool stuff, it's, right? It's really cool. And your grandparents kind of had him around a lot, right? So they were involved with him a little bit in terms Ab of seeing absolutely. him grow up and seeing him develop. Yep, his father, Terry, has been great to him, just making sure that being his tour manager right. and, and coordinating everything. And you my grand that. my grandparents look as Terry as like, you know, one of their own. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's really cool. Really cool, for really, them to really see that. cool story. Um, my nephew, whose father is also Terry, plays guitar. Um, he's in a band. He's he's doing really well. Um, they have a CD out, and they're doing local gigs, but they're now getting into paid gigs, mm. which is really cool to see your 16-year-old nephew get up on stage and mm. have the self-confidence to be able to express himself mm. um, artistically. And most of their songs are written by themselves, and Connor actually writes a lot of the songs, so it's pretty cool stuff. Mm. And he's played a lot of local venues, too, in the yes. Boston area, right? Yes, mm. yep, for sure, for sure. Um, so again, we have a great show lined up for you. Um, we are going to cut to break uh, in a minute here, and we are going to go to Weekly Motivation. I have a, a good quote for you to start off the new year. Um, when we come back, we'll do that, and then we'll uh, head into interviews. So uh, mm -hmm. stick around. We'll be right back.
everybody. Welcome back to It's All About Arts. So next up, we have our first interview with a very talented photographer. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce Heather Cochran. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. You too. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So I hear you're a photographer, huh? Um, you know, on the side. On the I wouldn't side. say that was my uh, profession, per se. Yeah. Yeah. Passion? Yeah. Right there? Yes, I'd say that. Cool. And how long have you been doing it for? Um, I mean, I've been, you know, taking pictures here and there for years and years, but I started to get more serious about it, I'd say, about maybe three or four years ago, mm -hmm. and, you know, went out and got a better camera, right. and, you know, started working more with editing and right. all of those kinds of things. And what prompted the uh, progression for, did you have more time on your hands, or did your interest yes. kind of develop further, or both? Um, I did have more time on my hands, yeah. so I had, uh, I got laid off from my job, and yeah. as I was looking for a new position, yeah. I took the opportunity to, you know, yeah. go out, take more pictures. Take spend, advantage of the time. Definitely. Productively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. God, God works in funny ways like that, right? So, yeah, that's how yeah. I got definitely more involved. That's awesome. And that, you said that was about three or four years ago? That was yeah, four years ago now. Cool, and you have one of your pieces out in our gallery, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. That's awesome. Now, um, what type of photographer would you classify yourself as? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I mostly try to capture small details in a bigger setting. setting. So if you were to find... Um, say the side of a building, mm -hmm. I might take a shot of that, but then focus in on a little small piece of that building mm -hmm. and highlight that. Really basically get rid of the rest of right. the building. Now do you fade it sometimes and the, ba the background is a little bit faded where it's more focused on the specific object that catches your eye? Sometimes I'll do that, you know, or blur it or black and white, that right. part of it. Um, generally I just try to really crop it out so I can get some nice detail and enhance the, that tiny little piece right. itself. And what tends to catch your eye? Would you say it's uh, the texture? Would you say it's color? Would you say it's placement? Um, I think it's more things that seem almost out of place. Out of place. Mm -hmm. In that particular setting. setting. Yeah. Right. So Actually, I would love to take pictures in this building because of all the old... Um, I think we could probably... It would be up. awesome, but, <laughs> but that kind of thing, you know, where maybe you see something really modern and then right, right in the middle is this lock that looks like it's 200 right. years old. Yeah, that's pretty cool stuff, so, right? Old and new. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool stuff. Um, we have a few images of yours, one of which I believe is out in the gallery for showing. And uh, again, like, we, like I said, we have uh, winter in New England. Uh, reception outside, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Um, Heather has one of her pieces up there, mm -hmm. um, and we have some images right oh, here. This, yeah. <laughs> this is not the one in the gallery, but it's still an important piece. Can you talk a little bit about this? That is the eternal flame at the World Trade Center yeah. Memorial. Um, I was down in New York last March, and it was the first time I had been to the um, World Trade Center Memorial since 9-11 and um, that was one picture I took and I, again you know trying to I don't know if you can see the flame but um, just trying to capture the details of the rocks and yeah. the I, um, I actually went to New York recently and, and went to uh, the exhibit and I, I don't think I remember seeing this but there's a lot to see on site. It right? was kind of off the beaten path. Right, right, right. That's really cool. Um, do we have another one? Oh yeah, graffiti. I love graffiti. <laughs> so I, I have a big fixation with graffiti. That is over, I think, at the Stony Brook Reservation somewhere. And um, I recently, we recently, as a family, took um, the train from Seattle to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and there are tons of you know train yards that we went through and kind of abandoned ones. Um, in or use, both? but cargo freight right, trains. Right, right, right. So there was just so much graffiti and. Um, between that and what I already had, I said, you know, I bet I could do a whole like ABC 
right. collage, right. and and I did. I was able to find every letter of the alphabet. That is so cool. And put it together. So what I like about this is I tend to gravitate towards that type of um, art that catches my eye because I think it's extremely expressive. And what I like about that is a lot of people, you know, frown on graffiti a because you know perhaps it's not welcomed in the area, and it, you know, but it really is art and it's reflection of the culture and. I'm just glad that you're kind of showcasing this because it is a, Thank you. It's a part of it. Yeah. Do we have another one? Oh, that's the um, yep. World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the Thank angles you. on this one. Yeah. How many shots would you say that you took? And out of those shots, how many did you keep? Oh, uh, I probably took, I'm mean, going to guess maybe 15, 20, and yeah. maybe I kept like four or five. Yeah. Did you do the museum? No, we didn't have time to go oh, in. That really, really affected me to see like some of the things that they had on display, which were also works of art, mm -hmm. um, like uh, staircases that some of it stayed intact and some of it oh, didn't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and some of the columns, you're, it's, you just really see how much of how big of a distraction it was to see these huge metal yeah. pieces that held yeah. up buildings. You know, it was really, that really hit home for me on that. Um, and I had, the museum wasn't up last time that I was there, so okay. that was like, you know, that was a lot for me. Um, as with everybody, I'm sure. Right. I'm sure. Um, so yeah, that, that's really cool. Um, do you have a website? Or you have a Etsy account? Yes, I have a page on Etsy. Cool. And why don't you tell them uh, where they can find more work of yours? Um, so I, there's a Facebook page that is just PIX, P-I-X, by Heather, okay. all one word. And then the Etsy account is the same. So okay, cool. you can go to Etsy and mm. search that way. Now, do you uh, sell your pieces, or is it more of uh, just an artistic uh, expression? Um, I mean, I both. both. I would say both. Both. Mm. So they can reach out to you if they're interested type of thing? Yeah. All right, well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining well, thank us. thank you. I really appreciate it. It was good to be here. Uh, we are going to cut to break, and we are going to do uh, weekly motivation. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
everyone, thanks for tuning in to Weekly Motivation. This is our first quote of the new year. So again, I like to have encouraging quotes. So my quote for you today is to make your mess your message. So make sure that the troubles that you go through and the mess that you kind of deal with, whatever area of life that you tend to be affected by, make sure that you're using that productively, whether it's a creative outlook or if you're, you know, being an ear for someone else's issues that are going on that you've been through, make sure that you use that so that it's not all in vain. Um, otherwise, that stuff stays with you. It turns into anger and resentment, and it can really come out in other areas of your life that you might not be aware of, but other people pick up on. So you want to make sure that you're being as light as possible and that you're really being productive with the challenges and um, obstacles that you're facing in, in your life. It's a great way to overcome it when you see the success of your efforts um, in that department. So with that, I, I wish everybody a great new year, and uh, we'll see you next week for another quote. And we're going to cut to commercial. <laughs>
came what here. What age did you come over to the U.S.? All very young, All very like young. six okay. months old. It but was, you have childhood me. memories because you would go back and visit. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep. Um, so I had some opportunity as I got older and got into photography to have another yeah, area to go point. photograph. And I would sure. say I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm like a world traveler, but I've pretty well traveled yeah. around, and that's every opportunity I get to lug my gear around with me is someplace new to yeah, explore. Yeah, new material, right? Absolutely. So, um, okay, so you came here for architectural school, is yes. that correct? Yes, yep. Okay. Um, now, what age would you say you developed an interest in photography? Um, probably right around high school years. Mm -hmm. um, I got you know, if Brian was mentioning cassette tapes. I mean, I, you know, I started on film, if anybody right, remembers right, that. Right. Um, good so old days. pretty, yeah, yeah. yeah. Formative years of like education and uh, the, I think the going to school for architecture really thrust me into that realm because uh, not only had to study architecture, but photograph it. Mm -hmm. uh, also building all you know, the models that we would have to build for our whatever, uh, Project thing we were taught, we were studying. Had to right. photograph our models for our portfolios, mm -hmm. so I started learning things about macro photography. Right. Um, and uh, when I shot film, I shot black and white. Mm -hmm. So I was it was forcing me to look at something and figure out how it would look when it was developed. Uh, what kind of strong strong contrasts and textures would I have to mm -hmm. think about? So the visualization, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of thinking forward mm -hmm. of it. That's pretty cool. I would imagine that um, working with architecture, you really learn what angles photograph well and kind mm -hmm. of how to portray like a something, a big beautiful piece of uh, whether it be a building or you, you know, you could use that for other large scale items, right? Mm -hmm. Once you know how to fo photograph something large, yeah, yep. that's really cool. That probably helped you a lot with yeah, because uh, you get advantage. Yeah, you got to pay attention to lighting for one. I mean, you're relying on time of day mm -hmm. and sometimes a season and that, mm -hmm. that changes the lighting of certain things. So you were lucky enough to get a camera around the age that you started your interest or did that come a little bit later? Uh, I was lucky enough to, to have a camera. Yeah. I had uh, my dad's uh, Pentax yeah. that he got. Do you still I just, have it? I just kind of, no, that thing's yeah. long gone. <laughs> it's an antique uh, now, right? Pro, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, I just kind of absconded with it one day and he was like, all right, it, I guess it's yours. And uh, <laughs> like how that works. Um, so you used that for a while and then mm -hmm. when did you make the transition over to a more modern day way? Um, probably soon after college. Mm -hmm. um, started getting into digital photography um, and then working more in the, I guess, digital darkroom, as people mm -hmm. call it, doing a lot more digital imaging, mm -hmm. um, doing more advanced photographic techniques like mm -hmm. high dynamic range photography where you take three different exposures of the same scene and there's mm -hmm. software that can put them together uh, so you can get a lot more visual effects. You can, the thing with photography is um, you're capturing you know, very short segment of time. So mm -hmm. you, depending on the scene, you may have very bright areas, very dark areas. Mm -hmm. Some of that you can correct. Uh, with those three exposures, you get a lot more. And it's kind of more replicating what the human eye is able to do Seeing when it there. looks at a scene. Your yeah. eye can more quickly adapt to dark areas and light areas, right. whereas a camera has a little bit of a lag in right. that sense. It's kind of like you're th throwing in all these different ingredients and kind of trying to figure out how best to combine them to make the, the best outcome of the mm -hmm. vision for the photo, right? Absolutely, yeah. So um, after you went to school, did you go into architecture? Or did you kind of switch it up and go into photography? Or did you kind of do both? I uh, kind of more went into a graphic design. Graphic design, okay. Yeah, I work as a graphic designer at a civil engineering firm. Okay. Uh, it's based in Watertown. Now, still? Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, so I've, you know, the, the photography was a hobby mm -hmm. that I've now kind of been able to work into my work. Mm -hmm. uh, I get to go out every now and again and uh, photograph our projects. That's really um, cool. Yep, that's yeah, it's really a very cool. nice way to get me out of the office every now and again. Now, when you're on site, or let's say that you find something and you don't have your camera, well, I guess previous to that question, what is your mm -hmm. go-to camera? Uh, I shoot right now with a, uh, a Canon 5D. Okay. 
Do you have multiple cameras or do you have your set one that you work with and that's it? That's pretty much the one I, I mostly use. Yeah. I, have a, I have another camera that was an older uh, DSLR camera. Yeah. I uh, haven't had the opportunity to use both cameras at the same time. I, I don't shoot weddings or anything like right, that. Right, and right, I think right. that's a prerequisite where if you're a wedding photographer, you have to have at least two cameras. Yeah. Is that any interest for you? Cause I... Not particularly. Yeah. The only people, the only people that I actually photograph is uh, my wife when she's a yoga instructor part time, oh, and so, so everywhere we go, yeah, she's always having me take photos of her. So well, it's good practice. That's that a way. great pairing. Uh, yoga. There's a lot of poses that are um, yeah. very interesting and kind of cool to capture. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. especially when you bring in the spirituality aspect. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, do you find yourself if you, you know, hypothetically, you're walking down the street and you see like you see something that you know would be a great photo. Do you ever take out your iPhone and kind of snap it, or you just kind of you didn't have your camera and oh well? Um, if it's something that really needs to be captured, I'll get it with my iPhone at mm -hmm. the very least. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, photography is one of those art forms that has become so ubiquitous now because everybody has mm -hmm. an iPhone and everybody can mm -hmm. take a photo and it'll come out pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, you know. The times where I wish I would have my camera is probably more when I'm like hiking in the whites. Or Do you ever take it with you? Uh, I've been told by some of my hiking partners that I should be carrying more weight to slow me down. So I probably <laughs> will start down? to do that. <laughs> so you have a camera you can carry. <laughs> um, yeah, you, I'll, if it's something that I really need to capture, I'll, I'll at least get it on the iPhone. Um, uh, but usually when I'm photography, doing photography for work, um, there are instances where I'll have to grab something for myself as well. Yeah. Alrighty, so uh, you do it for work and also you do it for uh, passion. Do you, do you do shows or anything like that? I've done Rosendale Open Studios in the past. Cool. Uh, the past couple of years I've taken um, part in the Rosendale Farmer's Market, Ooh. which is also Gl a great Which Glenn menu. was in charge of, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have a couple images, if you wouldn't mind walking us through those. Sure. That's really pretty. Sure. This one is the one that's actually in the show. Yeah. Um, I took this uh, down the street from my parents' house in Maine. Um, it, just walking around and uh, coming upon this perfectly placed I was going to ask you, because that looks like you picked it up in place. I that's did not, exactly how it was. It's an, that's Untouched fantastic. pine cone, just, just waiting. Dropped. Just waiting for the snow melt. That is that. incredible. Yep. That's one that in our gallery. And do we have another one? Mm, I like um, this one uh, is probably my wife's least favorite photo because we were on our way to dinner. This was taken in um, Acadia National Park, uh, and this is in Somesville, which yep. is right on the Somes Sound. And we are looking at a moonrise coming over Mount Pemetic. Um, we were on our way to dinner, and as soon as I saw that, I had yeah. to stop and spend 45 minutes to... 45? Uh, were you late for your reservation? I think we <laughs> might have been just on time, or maybe a little yeah. late. Uh, but it was one of those things, you know, you see, the, the iPhone was not going to cut it with right. this. Well, so. I was going to say, I mean, that looks fantastic. <laughs> All the colors, yeah. 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 Oh, I love bridges. I, yes. Every time I drive over one, I don't look, and I just hope that I get it, you know, because I don't want to drive and take pictures, but I just <laughs> open it up and do one of those... So some pe most people might be able to recognize this as the Four Point Channel Bridge, um, the, the uh, Old Northern Ave Bridge, the one that's uh, now swung open permanently because it was closed down because uh, it's too far deteriorated mm. to be left open. Right. Um, I mean, it used to have vehicle traffic go over it, and then when they built the new bridge, they kept it just for pedestrian and right. bicycle traffic. Uh, really but it's cool. still a very, in my mind, a very beautiful bridge. Yeah. Just all of the Absolutely. ironwork, mm. you know, and the black and white is nice in its in its way of the forms and all of the angles you see. But um, shot in color, it's very beautiful too. Just also, the way things have oh, patinaed. Yeah. I also like how you did it a little bit off center. It adds a lot more to the photo, and it's kind of cool to see the background through the bridge, mm -hmm. and then to see a little bit of the background without anything disturbing it. Yeah, so a little bit of context, a little yeah. bit of... Uh, Do we have another one, or is that the last one? Ooh. Uh, this was taken at uh, one of the beaches in California. Um, we did a Pacific Coast Drive one year, 
and uh, it's just right on right along the tide line some tractor piece that was left, left in out of the ocean and uh, huh. you know the colors are were just amazing the day we were there it was kind of a misty overcast day but you know just the lighting and of that severely rusted tractor is Alrighty. unique to me um, is there a website that people can find more information uh, I have a smug mug website okay. um, it's a smug mug a twisted tree Okay. Uh, I've all, my Facebook page also has a page for my photography uh, under Fantastic. Christoph Gervais, Twisted Tree Photography. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you uh, coming and talk about your artwork. Right. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are going to take a break, and we will come back uh, in the gallery and talk to the guests outside. We'll see you soon. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, Welcome back to It's All About Arts. 
So it is now time for our special treats. We have Winter in New England, the art exhibit in the BNN Gallery, and we will have Mr. Kurt interviewing some of the artists to hear them speak. So with that, we will shoot out to the gallery, and uh, Mr. Kurt will take it from here, and we'll be back to close you guys. See you soon. And here we are in the BNN Art Gallery. Uh, Amanda was just talking to Christopher, right? Did you like the interview? It was very eye-opening experience. <laughs> Great. So here we're going to look at some of the artwork here. Christopher is one of the uh, presenters, and with with there's Heather back there. She's another presenter. We'll look at their two works, right? Yep. We'll be doing that, and there's another exhibitor here. So let's. Look at some art. This one's by Phil. Phil is here, but this is a painting, a very lovely painting. And uh, I like the imagery in there. Getting a good shot of that? Oh, that's great. Okay, and there's Poplar Street. There, there's another example of Roslindale. Gee, it's almost like it's real, isn't it? It just happened yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, we can move down. And anyone can cheer for any paintings or photographs you like. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, I, yes, we liked all of them. We were talking about it earlier. This is uh, from Pat, Pat Steiner. Very good. That's a watercolor. Very, very nice. That's very hard to do. Ruby, didn't you say that? Yeah. Yes, it's very difficult. She did a nice job. Yeah, with the shadows and textures. Great. Great. So nice display of different style art. Here we're coming. Oh, look, surrealism. Two of them, side by side. A giant rose and a little tiny pine cone. <laughs> Very good. That's, that's Christopher's, and here's Christopher right here. Did you explain it in there to, to Amanda? Okay. That's great. So that's a nice, nice juxtaposition of those two. That's great. Yeah, very nice. And you said you found it like that, or yeah. okay, because that really that really looks like it was set up. <laughs> I didn't have to do a thing. Nature just did everything for me. Shouldn't all life be like that? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so moving right along, Eric Gehring, right here, a nice. Photo. That must be what the arboretum. What do you think? All in favor, think that's the arboretum. Say aye. Aye. Look, shoo, too easy. Okay. And here, what's this, Muriel? Muriel Ang Angelil. Okay. She must have fallen into the snow for that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Great. Okay. And here's a nice walk through, what, the Boston Common? Yeah. Mark, Mark Person. Okay. That must be Mark Person. Or is that Maria Person? I can't tell. Okay. Okay. So... We've gone halfway. What do you folks think? Uh, I like this one. That's the one falling into the snow, right? Up whatever you whatever what you want to see, and I see too much. I think, but uh, people. people Anybody else? Well, we can stay with this one for a second. What do you think? I see a horse. Very good. What What do you see? Uh, I don't know. Okay. What do you think? Um, I see a lot of colors. That's great. I think it all fell down. Okay. We'll, we'll look for more colors. Okay. Ah, lobster on the rough. That's very nice. Nice. Obviously, who's the artist? In Quinlan. Very nice. And look, we've come to Heather's. Okay, Heather, well, there it is. All right. Very nice. Obviously, you're buying tickets for the game early. The game's early, right? Okay, and the Norman Rockwell, yes. Did you, you, did you see Norman Rockwell there? I didn't until you mentioned that, but yeah, I see what you're saying. You can use it. All right. <laughs> okay, here's a nice, nice, nice graphic. Monotint. Excellent. Okay, we're going to move on quickly because obviously man is going to take over. And this is a painting. Uh, wow, it looks like a painting. But that, that photography is so good. That's 
Donna. Thank you. It's Donna. Yes. Yay. Okay. Nice I took it right across from my, our house. Great. Ve that's very lovely. And here's a couple more. And then we'll send it back to a man, Tom Steiner. A snow covered bridge. Very good. M more watercolor. Hmm. Do you, does anyone do watercolor here? I mean, this is photog three photographers here. So, anybody do watercolor? Oh, Ruby does. Okay, great. And here's the last one here. Nick, Highland, Highland in winter. Frank, golf courses. Okay. Should I send it back now? Amanda, it's to you, girl. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Kurt. You did a great job uh, showing all the artists that uh, contributed to this month's mm -hmm. uh, art gallery. We will have a next uh, gallery, the first of the month. So next month, uh, get your submissions in. You should see on our Facebook page, we will have mm -hmm. a call to art. Um, so that should be really exciting. Again, it's pretty cool. It's the first year of the show, and um, it was a pretty good show, Brian, huh? It's a great show, absolutely. Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, be mindful, have a great year, make sure you're getting out and doing something artful, as Glenn would say. Glenn, we miss you, and we will see you next week. And uh, we'll also see you guys next week. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you soon.